now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from that city down there. It's called New York. Ladies and gentlemen, that there is Lori Thompson, and the last time we talked to her, we had to cut her off halfway through her vacation. Uh, oh yeah, it, it was it was quite a texture. So you, you trip. went to you went to you went from Lisbon, you went to uh, you went to Barcelona. Yeah, then we went to a lot of towns in Spain. Seville and, uh, oh, yeah, just a lot. Oh, Seville? Oh, it's yeah. supposed to be very nice. It is very And do nice they let you off at Seville? They did. Uh-huh. And, uh, but you're, uh, it was raining so bad. If the weather doesn't cooperate with you on a trip. Well, this time of year, you know, this is, yeah. this is actually, uh, this, well, let me see here. What season is this there like? It, it's always spring in Ibiza. Yeah. It's always <laughs> spring in Ibiza, but, uh, you have various levels of rain and so on and so forth. And the best time to go, I don't know when it is. I'll have to find out. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's late summer. What would be for us late summer? I don't know that, but it seems like one of the things I heard yeah. Yeah. when we were amongst. Anyway, so, so then uh, so you, you stopped at a lot of different stops along the way. Yeah. And then, and then it was over to where? Uh, uh, Israel, I guess. And uh, <laughs> you no. stayed at the, uh, stayed at the uh, Gaza Hilton, I believe, didn't you? Yes, a little noisy, but, you know, they're renovating. They kind so. of avoided that area, didn't they, with the boat? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Because there was, I think there, there was much talk of the Red Sea. You know, what, what, what about places that are scheduled to visit ports in the Red Sea? So there, it's always on the cruise radar unrest anywhere you know because a lot of them go there are a lot of people going to israel to visit, you know to yeah. visit look up old family yeah. and uh, so you have to be cognizant of that but, but then we went to we went from spain to france which was great went to marseille went to marseille and then, yeah. yeah and went to a bunch of like port of Venir. i'm not even sure which country i think that was in spain but uh we just the little gems porto would you, be spanish porto. yeah yeah, yeah, um, but the, the yeah, and you, you uh, visit places that you maybe heard of, but so they, too they small. probably they stopped obviously at Monte Carlo, right? You're, oh yeah, 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 and that was that was definitely a keeper. And then just all the little places that they sometimes offer you, and you can go. And we like the little places as much because there's a lot more low key. Yeah. Um, the history is conveyed in a more low key way. Yeah. And then we went to Italy, which was a blast, and uh, went to Portofino, and I'd been to Portofino years ago, and so I wanted to go there, and it was fun, but the Lido Hotel, may she rest in peace, that's where I stayed the first time, so, you know, because of the Boscad song, mm-hmm. you know, Lido missed the boat, we just drove into Portofino late one night, I said, Lido, it's good enough for Boz, it's good enough for me, let's stop there, and then uh, Rome, Man, Rome, and this wasn't even the time. I have choice. never been to Rome. You've never been to Rome? In all my travels, I have never been to Rome. And one of the reasons was I, I always liked driving around Europe in those days. Oh, Which oh, I, I don't know dude. if I can even drive anymore. Okay. Oh, Ben, you wouldn't want to drive in Rome. Well, this it is what I'm so saying. I heard that the, the traffic was so terrible in Rome, stay away from it. So it, I've yeah. never gone into Rome, and I've never been to Venice. Oh, Venice is awesome. Yeah, we didn't go this trip. But I love Venice. To me, it's just like a well. It's obviously a place like no other. They don't have streets. They have aqueducts. No, when you know, it's just the the whole idea of all the engineering problems they had to overcome to create Venice. To me, it's just miraculous. Yeah, and it's it's way lovely. Yeah, yeah. And so, and you should be sure you can swim. Yes. And or at least take some little water wings with you, you know. So take one th- of those then you were things. in Italy, so you, all these places in Italy. Yes. And then where, which, uh, where did the boat go? We we ended up in Rome, and we stayed there for five days. Now there's a tour where you can go 
through Viator, I think it is. Uh, you can probably get them through others. But you go under the Coliseum, you see all the things that basically you see the production side of all the gladiator right, fight. Right. Backstage. <laughs> yeah, backstage <laughs> at the Coliseum. Exactly. And, and then you well, what like happened it. was the the they had a you know an arena with dirt on yeah. it and all of that. But they also had trap doors. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And okay. people would come and they'd watch this and you know, this was a big thing for the Emperor to do. He did this for the people, so they would love mm -hmm. him. And they would yeah. stage these huge shows. In that Coliseum, they actually staged uh, naval battles. Yes. They, they'd you fill it with fill water. It. Yes. And that, that in itself is amazing. When you see it, you know, how'd they plug that hole? how they plug that hole? Yeah, but they were able to do that. But, and, yeah, they yeah. kept all the ant tigers and the, all the animals uh, underneath, and then they would come through trap doors, and the gladiators <laughs> would fight the tigers and so on and so forth. But they were they did everything there. I mean, it was it's incredible. And I think it was how long did it last? About a hundred years, something like that, maybe more. I, I don't know. I think it was a hundred years or less. Yeah, because you know, obviously, it was so inhumane, completely inhumane. Oh, people it, love that though. I mean, yeah, in, you go to Spain. I, the one thing I've never done in Spain, and I wanted to do it. I, mean, I, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, bullfights. Be bullfights. Mm -hmm. uh, because the Spanish people are really wonderful people. They're, they're, they're gentle, and they're decent, and they're really, you know, they'll do anything they can to help you. I mean, I always often des describe the difference between France and uh uh, and and Spain. Spain in France, if you don't speak the language perfectly, they won't give you directions. And in <laughs> Spain, they will spend an hour trying to communicate with you to tell you how to go two blocks. Yeah, or yeah. just take you there. Yeah, they'll just take. That's you the there. difference between the Spanish people and the French people. Tui on the French people. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but the the, the uh, underground of the Coliseum, they actually had elevators back then. Yeah, we saw the elevators, and they would take not the not the they actually had elephants as part of the entertainment on occasion at the Coliseum. Yeah, but so they didn't use the elevators for the elephants; that they used them for all the smaller animals. They had giraffes they would use uh, at the Coliseum. Yeah, and so, and the just the like I say the production side. Of what of those spectacles to me was really interesting. You're fascinating, and, fascinating. And a tour guide too said, "You don't know it wasn't uh, Scandinavia, but it was Italy that invented the Lego, because they had this system of construction where they would have posts and then they would carve holes to give a column stability, mm -hmm. and so that was kind of and it fit just like a logo, a Lego. Wow. So that was, I would recommend that tour. Either too. that, or if you didn't build it right, it's like playing Jenga. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's exactly, exactly what it was like. Uh, so you were there for five days. Yeah, and it, what, it was. What, and, tell like, us about the hotel. Where did you stay? We stay at the Grand Hotel Flora, which is a Marriott hotel, but my uh, and it's like eight hundred bucks a night. But my husband, because he traveled so much for business. Um, has like a billion points, and so we got to stay there for free. And as, as Reese Witherspoon says, you don't get cheaper than free. He's not so, working anymore, but he still has his points, right? Well, hotel points, yeah. Hotel that he points. accrued Merrill Lynch because they are a good company. They were at least a classically good company that took care of their employees. Let him keep those points. I have so, a, a friend who was a biggie at Merrill Lynch at one uh -huh. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were. They took care of their people, you know. I don't yeah. know if they still do because they merged with Bank America or Bank America bought them. Oh but, yeah, uh, oh yeah. yeah. They were really one of those classic American companies that treated you like family. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so you then took an, a, uh, um, you got your plane back to the United States from Rome, right? Yeah. And you know what? I think people are going to eventually stop traveling because the airports are so, uh, what's the word, just ludicrous. I mean, this, you wait in line this. to wait in line. It's it's re, it's just so ridiculous, man. Right? And so, and we're even on that pre-check. You know, we're in the states, but that's only good in the states. You know, where you can kind of cut the line. But it's just becoming so ludicrous. I I, I don't get it. People are just going to get tired of being treated like cattle. How do you get pre-check? You have to you have to go out and 
fill out forms and you have to fill out forms you have to go to a place personally once you filled out the form it's a government program that basically pre-screens you for felonies and certain crimes and certain things on a if you have a criminal record and if you're cleared then you can go to the tsa pre-check. but if you have a criminal record you can't get pre-screened I don't know. I can't speak with authority on that. Yeah. They might they might ask you about it in an interview, and if you, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but I if, haven't committed any crimes. I have you know, none of that. But I'm 84 years old, and let's say I'd committed crimes in the past. Do you really think I'm going to do them now? <laughs> right. Do you, you think really I have the think I'm going to do them now? And the want yeah. to yes to commit yeah. any crime. I don't even smoke in laboratories anymore. You know, it's yeah. just. <laughs> but that uh, that helps a little, but that's only on domestic. Yeah. You know, so it was a good little vacation. Sounds like it, it was, was terrific. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was a month warm up for the world cruise because I was having apprehensions about the world cruise. Like, can I really be in a room this size with that guy <laughs> for <laughs> for five months? And so we did upgrade to a suite, which is a decent size, but it's you know it's not cheap, but. It, it, I think it's more conducive to a married couple taking a world cruise and actually staying together. So we won't be able to hear from you at that point because you, you've had trouble with Wi-Fi on these trips. I have. And Ben, my intentions are always good. But like this time, it was the time difference. You know, we found a couple spots um, like around we were on these, you know, we were early to these tours. <laughs> I said, well, let's make a good spot. He goes, yeah, but it's it's three thirty Bennett's time a.m. I doubt that he's gonna as charming as you are, Laura. I doubt that he's gonna wake up and want to chat with you at three thirty in the morning. Yeah. So that yeah. that was one thing, and just there's that one time um, we saw some people getting booted out of it was where we were we were thinking of taking some video, and I don't know if video wasn't allowed. So a military looking guy came up and said, no video, no cameras. So we were like, well, I guess that checks this place off. Yeah. But it was it was in kind of a pier nautical area, so that might have been, you know, yeah, no well, pictures of our navy, no pictures. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we might be able to figure something out, you know. Maybe. Because yeah, I'm sure you could because you're either so that or we just sad. won't hear from you for five months. Yeah. Oh, but wouldn't that just kill you? <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, uh, I, I would love to do these things with you, say, sitting in. A, yeah, I'm willing to. You know, if you're willing to do it at uh, at uh, t- you know ten o'clock at night, I can do it at four o'clock in the afternoon. You know. Yeah, so that's that's I, true. I, so that uh, might or, be a, an angle. Or if you if you if you can do it at six o'clock at night, uh, yeah. then it's only noon here, so we're fine. Okay. Know? Yeah, because yeah. we're gonna. And plus, on I mean, the world did, did, you, did you have a good enough Wi-Fi that you could do it? Yeah, I mean okay. it's. I think yeah, I think so. Um, but it, it changes. Sometimes you're given this pass, a Verizon thing, where you have unlimited Wi-Fi for the day. And then other times, other cities, uh, we've been in cities where they must have had blanket Wi-Fi, um, which would be a better thing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, see, I'm not as astute as you are. I, I know, I know. But yeah. uh, you know, I, I, some, most of the ships now have Wi-Fi. But it's shitty. But you can pay for an advanced version of it, can't you? We paid for it. Rick paid for it. And it's so much. still yeah. shitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, everything takes so long it, uh, to load. And anyway. Um, um, but it would be fun. It would be a blast to be able to do some with you. But the World Cruise isn't until January. Yeah. So ha- we have much bantering time between now and yeah. then to figure it out. But it'd be nice if occasionally we could do one of these from somewhere in the world, wherever you were, you know. Yeah, well, if could if I could uh, kind of tape some, do some uh Well, you see, we, we, we do this using Zoom, and Zoom doesn't right. take up that much bandwidth on Wi-Fi. Right. So it is much more, it, it's easier to do than a lot of other systems, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I have Zoom. people calling me. I have a guy who calls me all the time from Thailand, from uh, uh, Malaysia. Really? Yeah, we're gonna hit yeah. Malaysia. And he's he's driving way. around and he's uh, he's uh, showing us stuff out the window of the bus, and he gets good Wi-Fi. So you know you should be able to. Yeah, we should. I mean, I don't always know the right questions to ask, but I will 
just keep asking dumb questions and eventually someone, someone will say. Well, we'll just bank like, do. we'll just bank 20 interviews before you leave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <it's not> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we but did. We, ba we banked them for this vacation and I think I was one week short of, of having a thing with you. So I took the night off. Yeah, there yeah. you go. You deserve uh, it, man. Uh, Stay yeah. home with your missus. <laughs> Something I want to bring up. Uh, since we got about 10 minutes left and if you don't want to talk about it we won't uh, okay. is that uh, you, you said you got to do this early today because you and your your spouse are going to a, a lawyer to make up wills I know it was his idea if if it were up to me I'd probably die in test state but he's very good with financial details that's one of the reasons I was attracted to him because I'm not you know, I am not at all. Yeah. And so he handles everything like that. And uh, so he said, I made us an appointment at this estate attorney. And uh, I was like, oh, that's nice. Do I have to go? Uh, <laughs> and it's, I guess you have to think about those things. See, he has a child. I don't have any dependents. I have my yeah, cousin right. who I'd like to leave some and a friend of mine. But um, it's... Well, we, we did wills online, and I told Marjorie, as soon as we get this money, let's go get a lawyer, and let's redo the, the just to make sure that, you know, the one we have, we can just have them look at it and say, is this good enough? And if it's good enough, great. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I just want to know idea. that the one that we had made up that she got online, mm -hmm. um, you know, is legitimate and, and it's no problem to it plus now with this extra money coming in there's m more of a uh, downside you know if if the you don't have a will if the will isn't completely correct does she get that money or do i get the money you know i know i have the money it's in my name but you know but you are married aren't you you're married oh yeah we're married yeah okay. we're married legally and so well, i mean uh, if you do if let's say you're not married but you can still go out and make a will and give each other everything, you know. That's right. Yeah, or you can do things with your property, okay. like make a community property. Like, uh, I, I just, I, I don't know. This is something I never would have concerned myself with. But to him, it's like a big deal. And, you know, that's because he had more money going in than I did. Yeah. And, I mean, I've got some that I could live off from my parents. Um, but I don't want to start spending it quite yet. Huh. And, uh so it's i guess it makes sense but see the sticky thing is he has a child i don't and uh i love i really love his daughter um she's great but i don't want to be uh, left with nothing i mean i'm you know i am self-serving enough to say that i don't want to be working at hardy's uh <laughs> when i'm 80. so yeah. that's what I, I feel like i got to look out a little bit for my interests but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I may have horror stories next week. I may have. Well, I mean, oh, it, 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 it's depressing to make out a will. Well, I just see what money does to people when my parents died and my sister suddenly became the executor, and suddenly things that I was guaranteed in writing weren't going to happen. I, well, so I told about I told about two or three people about this money I was getting. Okay, uh -huh. how much it was, which is a considerable Significant. amount. Significant. Yes. And uh, 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 I learned after I told the third person, do not tell anybody about it. Don't tell a soul. Because what happens is, I mean, I can, I can say it now, but what happens is I had this one guy, comedian, I could tell you who he was, but I, you'd know who he was, but I'm not going to say who I was interviewing. And I, afterwards, I told him about this because I was excited about it. I just found out about it, and I was excited uh, uh, about this bequest. Yes. And the first thing out of his mouth was, can you loan me $10,000? <laughs> that is got that is such a sack in the solar plexus, yeah. isn't it? And I said, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no. I know, right. because number one, I don't have it yet, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to yeah. have it for a year or so. So, yeah. you know, I, I, that bothered me, though. And, oh, and I suddenly realized that you have to be very careful who you tell about it. Right, because some people just see dollar signs. Like after my par I got my parents' money, which wasn't 
I mean, I, I couldn't just, you know, live on easy street for the rest of my life. And go the, I mean, but I could live very comfortably on it. Um, and people in my hometown knew, and I think they perceived that my parents had a lot more wealth than they did. Uh, but then one of the people I'd been friends with in high school comes up, she's having marital difficulties and she wants me to pay for her rent on an apartment. See, see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, what? I wouldn't, no, I might do that for, you know, for someone else. Do not else, mention I, it to anybody. Don't, you do know. not. It will cause you nothing I mean, but I've only told people now that I trust, you know. Yeah. I know yeah. the next words out of their mouths aren't gonna be, can you lend me $10,000? That, that is so discouraging. I mean, it makes you, you can just feel yourself like, it's almost like, you know, blood running out of your body when someone that you, that yeah. you thought was a friend my What's only that? problem is I have a tendency to want to give money to people who I like, uh, yeah. and and uh, I really shouldn't. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I mean, it's a costly habit, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a costly habit, but uh, that's I'm kind of that kind of person, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and the thing is that uh, uh, I'm like I'm giving my business manager ten thousand off the top. I just want him to have it. He's been good to yeah. me all these years. When I was out of work, he kind of paid my bills, you know. And, yeah, and, I like your manager. He's yeah, a good yeah. And, and I feel he deserves it, you know. Uh, and there are a couple of other people that I feel I would want to, if I had the chance, I would give quite a few people money. People who are yeah. not doing well right now, people who blah, 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 you know. You buy a one-man Salvation Army. But, uh, you know, I've got to be careful about that. that that's my... That's how good I am with money. I give it away. Right. You know? See, I, I'm not, I know I'm not good with it. I married a guy that's really good with it, and we're content that And way. I have about $200,000 in savings. So added yeah. to that money, you know, what? We, and Marjorie and I have to spend it, you know, because we it, don't man. have any kids or nothing. So, that's right. Neither of you do. Yeah. Oh, now, if, if, I were, if I were 60 right now. I put the money uh -huh. in the bank and live off the interest. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. But uh, I'm not that. I'm 84. Marjorie's 80. We got to go spend this money as fast as we possibly can. You know. Tell Marjorie to get on Amazon and stay on until it's gone. Yeah. I mean, you know. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, even if we keep going, we may not be able to spend this for the rest of our lives, you know. Oh, high class problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, I, uh, I, but I thank, I thank my friend Shecky for doing it. Uh, I wish he were here, I wish I wasn't getting the money. When yeah. he first told me he made out a will, he said to me, uh, I'm leaving you so much, and I said to him, well, I wanna thank you, and that's very nice, but let's face it, I'm 80, I was 83, Three at the time, I think, eighty-two, and I mm -hmm. said, "I'm I'm I'm over 80. I said, "You're gonna outlive me, so I'm never <laughs> gonna see that money." But thank you, and yeah, and uh, um, uh, I think it was a month later, two months later, he was dead. Yeah, isn't that yeah. amazing? I mean, yeah. the way life occurs yeah. these curves. You know, and I just I thought, hey, that's very nice that he remembered me. You know, yeah, that's that's good. It sure is nice. Yeah. You know. And, and and that he thought enough of me to leave me that much money. And, that's a great. Uh, and, he, and he said, "I'm I'm not leaving you the million, uh, because I'm leaving that to my other person, who I consider my best friend, which is this woman that took care of him in later years. <laughs> took care of him? No, 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 no. I'm talking like really not. took care of him. Got him to hot doctors' visits, things like that. Oh you know, wow! Oh, that's she deserves gonna, every penny. Okay. Yeah. And she's also the executor of the will, so I think she gets ten percent of the estate for doing that. I think you do. Yeah, right. that's yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I think of the world of her, and I think I'm so thank her for taking care of him. And if I got a million bucks, what would I do with it? You know, I'd I know. really be, I really have to waste it. You, you know? you'd have to spend twice as fast. There'd have to be two of you. Double if, if I had kids. I would be very careful to try and leave it to them. Okay. Yeah. But and the, the thing is, if you, oh man, if you get kids and then there's one grand, one one of those kids has a grandchild, has given your parents a grandchild, it gets so sticky. I can't believe that my family has become so cliche. The parents die 
and the kids, my, my sisters don't speak to me. And then I, and, and, and like, I'm the one. Well, I know cool. why, because you're an absolutely detestable human being. <laughs> well, that aside, don't you think? No, you're a detestable but, human being, so I, I can see. I wouldn't talk to you if I were your sister. Yeah, so. no, you're being you're probably being paid to talk to me now, right? It, it always do. bothers me when I hear, and we're going to run over time here, but I don't care. Uh, 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 when people have brothers and sisters and they don't get along. I know. And, well, and she, my, my that, whole feeling is life is too short this yes. is family. This is as close as family is going to get. You both came from the same vagina, you know? <laughs> Which is a very unique bond. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, why you know, families do this? And sometimes it happens when the parents die and the estate is settled. I hear about stories, they're just horror stories, about what mem one member of the family will do to another to try and get the money and things like yeah. that. And the way that people, when, when I've noticed when someone does something that's, that's in their interest and it should have been in a shared interest, they rationalize it, first of all, you know, yeah. instead of saying, I'm feeling selfish and I'm going to do this for myself, that I could handle, you know, but it's the rationalizations that they give that just make no sense at all. Right. And, the, and the fact that they're willing to make fall guys of deceased parents. Well, li just, life's too short, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's shorter than, you know, at 84, I'm looking back and go, you know, I, I think it was Marlon Brando when he died. His last words were, is that all there was? Or is that all there is? <laughs> you know. Oh, man. Oh, oh, no, no. What was that all about? That, I think that was his, something like that was his last words. And I think you do get to that point because you look back at it and, you know, I remember, you know, being five years old, mm -hmm. you know, and then home my whole life happened. Now, these are years and years and years later, but when you on this end of it, went by like that. Yeah, because you know? up until I was 18 or 19, life was pretty, you know, steady and predictable. But from 19 on, man, it became a locomotive. The other thing that bothers me, and again, I say we're running over, but to hell with it. Um, you people out there are waiting online to come on the show, just wait a little bit more. Uh, uh, is I guess what really you know amazes me is we are, if you think about us in the universe, you and I are just specks. We're like some kind of flow thing that floats through the air that's like a little piece. We're nothing. We're right. nothing. And to us, we're everything. That's it. We and are the, you, there. If there's a center to the universe, it's right here. <laughs> That's right. And you know, actually thinking of us as a speck has helped me mm -hmm. deal with get over my bad self. Yeah. You know, I mean, just knowing that I, if there's a hassle in my life, I'm the one making it, and just do everything you can to make uh, to love the people around you, love the people that are important to you, and then make your mistakes, but don't make them again. Yeah, Go right, on. right, right. You Go know. Living. So as I get closer to that, you know, I I'm scared. I'm, you know, I, Are you scared of death? Then yeah, it's it'll yeah. be it'll be a walk in the park. I promise you. It'll be a walk in the park. Okay. Yeah, and well, it's not I, just. I, I, I try to re think if there is something else because it seems useless that I've gained all this knowledge, all this ability, and everything, and when I die, it disappears. See, to, I don't think it disappears. I think it joins with other ideas that are that will be appreciated, you know. And you create create in a sense this body of appreciation with like minded souls. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Hey, listen. <laughs> good to have you back. At least we got you until January. Yeah. At, it's at good which to point be back. I, we should go on a big tour too, the world yeah. tour. That's kind of you know. <laughs> By the time you get back, you're going to be so squirrely. I wonder, yeah. But I'll be, you know what is wonderful? It really brings you down to earth when you do, when you travel a lot, because mm -hmm. you realize that you're that speck. And that helps make life more relaxed. How big just, a boat, uh, just one last question, how big a boat is the one that you're taking around the world? 
I believe it's, uh, well, I know it's 700 or less. Oh, really? So, oh, good. Yeah, so I'll good. get to know everybody. Let like me know where it is and who it is and what it is. Marjorie doesn't want to go that long, but I might say to hell with her, I'm going. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what, Rick, I got in the skate clause. Um, I said, you know what, if I find out that I, if I realize I'm miserable after two months, I, I'm going to get on a plane and come back home. And he said, okay, I'll drive you to the airport, but I'm not coming back. So it was like, okay. And once I had that out clause, I was fine. And then when we it got sounds to like sleep, you guys travel real well. We do, we do, but that's because I'm such a good sport. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you in two weeks, I guess, we're recording these things, but we'll see you next week, obviously, uh, with a new episode of Alex and Lori, who could talk forever, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Bye-bye. Love ya. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, I have to turn on my microphone so you can hear me. Hi. Yeah, my, my, Wednesdays always screw, I always screw up like crazy. I always do for some strange, odd, and unusual reason. But anyway, nice to, talking to Lori again. I hope you enjoy her as much as I enjoy her. And uh, I think maybe it's time that we should uh, uh, check in on uh, uh, our people here. Boy, we got quite a few waiting here. Ah, that's, uh, that, that bodes well. Okay. There we go. Oh, wow. There we go. We got, uh, we got, uh, our old friend Jeff and, uh, there, yeah. there's Kevin, uh, and, uh, there is Alan and there is Josh, uh, and there is, uh, Brian and there is Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Hey, okay. People. Hello, who... Lori. You can talk all day to her. Yeah. And she's good, but I was a little confused at her last comment. She's going to be on this cruise ship, and if she wants to get off, her husband's going to drive her to the airport. What, across the ocean? No, so she can fly back from wherever they are. I know, yeah, so right. she can fly back, but how does he drive her if they're on a cruise ship? He rents a car and drives her to in the... In port, uh, yeah, when they get oh, in. Oh, 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 I thought they were staying don't. at sea. <laughs> Don't explain. Don't explain the stuff to him. What about marriages? Don't you understand? <laughs> well, I'd understand that I didn't get married, so that that I understand. Yeah, um, let me see here. Were, uh, uh, what did your T-shirt say tonight? Opening ten years. What does your T-shirt say tonight, Charlie? People <laughs> who tolerate me on a daily basis; those are the real heroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh this boy! This guy's got great T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has the best T-shirts. I just, yeah. I'm just boring with mine. There's still all the 1939 T-shirts. I still wear the same ones with the neck pulled down and. Yeah, but I was thinking, I was thinking of getting like some T-shirts like he does, but then I could never top him. So <laughs> you know, I, you know, <laughs> do, do you actually go looking for these things, or do you have them made up sometimes? No, I go looking for them. I don't get them custom designed or anything. Is this you like one, Yeah, like one thing on Facebook, and and you're getting everything. Yeah, then they then they show you a whole bunch of stuff, and every once in a while, it looks good. So I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the rich folks. Anyway, welcome to another uh, another wonderful week here. Yes. Uh, Is this the ninth or the tenth year? Huh? It's the tenth year. It's the tenth year. Uh, Steve Fox said this in our ninth year. No, our 10th year does not start till the beginning of next month. Yeah. I got it now. My bad. No problem. Jeez. And you don't think we already have those recorded? I, I believe you do, but I thought last week. <laughs> I even week have you said the opening was, made. I, I thought last week you said that it was going to happen this week, so my, my bad. No, he talked about how it was getting ready to come up. That's what and made even me Charlie think. was confused, but that's okay. Again, uh, we're explaining uh, stuff for Alan. Can we get the show going? Please. <laughs> How much are, should we talk about Half Brian? Half the show's been explaining stuff for Alan. Come on. 
<laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, no, it's 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 uh, uh, June uh, the first of June. Yeah, we can officially <laughs> call it that. Yeah. Plus, well, so I haven't made up the imagers yet. I just made up the the, uh, uh, the opening to this show with all new visuals and things like that. You know, and, and uh, a, a <clears> surprise <throat> we don't say now in its tenth year. Mm -mm. What do you think we say? Do you have any anybody have an idea what we say? Decade. Huh? A decade. decade. Yeah, I agree no. with you. Well, I could have said decade. decade. Oh. Yeah, but I didn't say decade. Oh. Hmm. Uh, celebrating its first its uh, for, its its uh, uh, its first era. Ah. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Oh, that's right. The the the, the Taylor Swift part. Yeah. That's what I guess. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so are you gonna have an intro well, of Brian talking to the era is around? 10 years as well, right? Mm. Huh? 10 years. Wow, I thought an era was longer than that. An era, yeah. that's me. Oh, well, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, he's a scientist, I'll live you know? with it anyway for the next year. The hell with it. <laughs> that's more history than science, Alan. Huh? Oh. So, eras are more history than science. Yeah, I guess so. I just wanted to blame you. Well, I could. I should have said maybe is celebrating its first decade. Yeah, but era sounds better. Yes, it does. Era sounds more like we've been on for a long time. You know, actually, I've been doing uh, internet broadcasting for longer than that. Yeah. You know, my uh, century. Huh? Close to a century. <laughs> You're Sorry. one to talk. I'm, I'm no spring chicken. No, you're no spring chicken at all. No. But, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know, I've been a little, little weirdly depressed today, and I don't know why. I think it's I mixed a couple of my medicines last night that I shouldn't have. And so I, I'm, I'm kind of depressed. No, I'm even more depressed because I should have said decade instead of era. But to hell with it; it's already done. <laughs> the, actually, the uh, uh, the things we do, the ones that we do on the program, not the opening to the show, are all now in its tenth year. So, oh, yeah, okay. ten years doing this. Why? Yep. Why? So you it's have a presence. Well. You know, I mean, that's what Phil this, says. This year, hopefully, we will be going away for, for a couple of uh, trips. You know, mm -hmm. uh, um, you owe it to yourself and Marjorie. Yeah. I got to tell you though, about about getting the money, I got I got it. Okay, I got it in one check. I don't know why they sent a check. Why they didn't oh. say to me, "Can we do a direct deposit?" Because if they do a direct deposit then the bank doesn't question the check, all right? Mm -hmm. So now I deposit the check the other day, and I'm told, well, it'll be a week before it gets deposited into your account. <laughs> like, we have to make oh. sure it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, yeah. Know. Only a week, huh? I thought it'd be a month. Oh, no, no, a week, <laughs> a week. I was surprised that I could do mine on the, on the phone. Really? Yep. I uh, I asked them down there if I could do it by uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks ago when I was planning on it. Could I do it by, you know, on the Internet? You know, where you take a picture of it and then you yeah. sign it. And so yeah. On. And uh, they said no. Not that much. Not no. this much. <laughs> Mine said yeah, and they did. Well, I went, huh? How much was yours? Uh, I don't want to say. Huh? Come on, That's we want to steal money myself. from your account. Come on. <laughs> no. My bank limits it to ten thousand. Anything more than ten thousand, you got to bring it in in person. Yeah, and and you got to you got to wait while they go and make sure the thing yeah. you know. Well, uh, I'm assuming uh, Charlie never goes to the bank. You know, can be cash. <laughs> I haven't gone yet. <laughs> yeah. It's like they take the check and put put it between their teeth. And go, you know, see if it's okay. You know, but. Anyway, I, I I just don't know why nobody did it uh, with direct deposit. 
you know, that would have been the easiest way to do it and the most efficient. Here's what happened. I got this thing in the mail, right? The envelope from the, the lawyers. And wow. I go, and I go, okay, so they mailed it through the mail. Well, what if it got lost? Yeah. Right? <laughs> but that wasn't the worst part of it. I checked, and they didn't lick the envelope shut. They <laughs> taped it. They taped one little part of it shut. I'm going, are they nuts? They do this for a living, right? They're tired of paper cuts on their tongue. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, no, but I mean, you would think Use they would know after all these years of doing this, <laughs> right. let's do direct deposit, let's do this, let's do mm. that. I don't understand it, but anyway. The good thing is you deposit the <laughs> check, and what? while it's on hold, they're paying you interest. Yeah, they are paying interest on that, yeah. The federal law. Really? Yeah, well, you know, oh, yeah. that'd be interesting. Well, they yeah, if they hold it for seven days and you have an interest bearing account, they got to pay interest while they. I don't hold know it. if it's an interest bearing account or not. Oh. oh. See, I'm I'm probably getting I'm probably going to take the money out of there and put it somewhere else, uh, yeah. because as my business manager said, you get the money, Pam. Huh? Yeah. Get the yeah. best interest on it you can. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the question is, you know, the question is, uh, do I want to uh, do I want to keep it in my normal bank? Because no, spend it. Am I going no, to get my the bank's best got room. You can out, send it. out of my money <laughs> with with that kind of you know the normal bank? So I don't know. I mean, we're seeing a money guy in a week um, in order to um, see. You know, what's the best place to put this money where I can draw it out whenever I want to, but it's gaining some kind of interest and so on and so forth. Is that, because, is that a referral from your business manager? What? Is he a referral from your business manager? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For me, oh, no. For me, liquid money goes into a liquid money market account. It's like a high interest checking account. Yeah, but... You, uh, but can you then pull money out of it at any time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Money. Well, I'll. I'll Whenever you want. Uh, uh, as much as I like your opinion about stuff, I'll wait to talk to this guy. <laughs> you know. Not an expert at it, but I'm making pretty good well, money. Well, this right guy here. is. Um, so. Good. You can refer him to me. I could use a money manager. Yeah. You know, I mean, he may tell me just keep it where it is. You know. We don't sure. care. Buried under the mattress. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, my, my business manager today said, I said, well, I got to spend this money before I die. You know, I don't want to leave any on the table, right? Because I don't, I, don't, I don't have any kids or anything like that. We don't want to leave any of it on the table. Um, and then my business manager said, yeah, but what if you live like your mother to be 100 and you eat up all that money? Yeah. And I'm going, you know, the worst part about this whole thing is, who knows when you're gonna die? You know. Yeah, but if you didn't have that money right now, you could still live fine, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, so that's yeah. So then spend it, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly Please, we want to go to your funeral and say, "Oh my God, he just got back from all your traveling," and we yeah. want to be happy about it. Jeez. We don't want to say, "Jeez, he he saved everything. We get it all. Who's gonna get it?" So. Yeah, I mean, have fun I, with it and enjoy it. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what I that, that's how I feel. But yeah. you know, all of a sudden, I got my business manager going. But wait a minute, you could live no. to be hundred, and I'm going. Well, if you I are. live to be a hundred, I I'll get the state yeah. to take care of me. You know. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah, got to exactly. be some charity that you like that you could leave. Oh, well, some we're of gonna it. we're gonna leave the whatever's left over to some charity. Yeah, but that charity, come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll leave it to the. I think I'll leave it to the Trump campaign. Oh, no. <laughs> I go. You know, you know. I'll make sure you uh, never die. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Brian? My friend's on a dating app, and he was he was, he and I were chatting tonight, and he said that there are actually people that are putting like, if you're a Trumper, please swipe uh, swipe left, I guess, which would be like. That's on my dating app I, I do not want any trumpers or really wow yeah. that's that's, cur that's, that's you crazy. know that's why brian can't get a hold of you on that <laughs> i do not want to be fighting about politics at home okay. <laughs> well i think i would put that in mind too if you're a trumper please don't even 
Don't yeah. even apply. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty. You know, but but but, but Charlie, sometimes you look at her and and, and just go. God damn it! No, I'm sorry. I don't care how Sarah Palin never appealed to me, no matter how cute she was. Well, I thought Sarah. I thought Sarah Palin was kind of hot. You know. So would you date Christy Nome because she shoots dogs? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh my God! Well, There's Christy Nome is, is is sexy. Oh, I got right. It. You know. Oh wait a minute! She'll shoot but, your but, dog, but I would she, never go out if he's out of her. hand. If he's too happy. <laughs> yeah, gets too happy. Just having the time of his life. So of take course some bitch out to the gravel pit and take care of his ass. Well, she said that he was a lousy dog uh, huh. because he wouldn't. Uh, he was too he? happy. Well, he he was was too Cricket happy. was too happy. He was too yeah. happy, and he wouldn't do something. And then it he wouldn't hunt he, right. He killed a chicken, and she shot him for that. <laughs> Sounds He's like a Hitler. Bird dog. A chicken's a bird. What did she expect? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So right. anyway, Shoot the know. damn thing. <laughs> Deserved it. Damn it. Sounds so, like Christy Hitler. Nome, uh, really, that, he, uh, do you think she's going to be Trump's uh, vice know. presidential choice? I would awesome. hope so because that would ensure he'd lose. Yeah. I was right. just going to say, he'll, he'll definitely lose if he takes her. I think it's. Oh, great. hell no. He'll gain more and more people. He'll take over then. I think it's I think it's getting uh, less and less uh, sure that Trump will be elected. Uh, there are a lot of people who are now saying, "Well, you know." I don't know. I'm thinking about jumping over, man. <laughs> don't you have to swim across the Rio Grande first? I can do that. <laughs> oh. Because they're saying that uh, that uh, the trial is not helping him. You know. Yep. Uh, and, and a lot of it has to do with his demeanor. Uh, that you know, he's like falling asleep. You know, but Trump people like that. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to get rid of this guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I put him in the waiting room. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> he always calls. Every time he calls up or tries to get on, uh, he. Um, is in the nude. He's he's in the yeah. nude. He's sitting yeah. there naked. You know. And um, why doesn't he call an old lady show or something like that instead of an old man show? <laughs> what, what do you mean an old man show? All of us are a little bit on the older side, so I call. Well, uh, somebody well, called me an old man in Costco the other day, so I feel I'm old. The youngster here actually is Josh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's a guy named Tyson Zacosta, who is on our chat, yeah, he's room on the chat. a lot, yeah. but I don't know if that's him. Well, ask him on the uh, chat. You, oh, you see, Tyson Zacosta is on the chat right now, is so this guy is probably trying to you? sign on at, as Tyson Zacosta. Well, we just ask him right now. I just hey, Tyson's, him. is it you that's been trying to get in? That's trying to get in, Tyson. Tyson. I just asked him. Oh, did you just the ask chat. him? Yeah, and what does he say? It is not me, he says. No. It is not you. <laughs> okay, so we'll remove him. Okay. Uh, I don't want to report. To Why doesn't somebody just say they're Donald Trump? Will you meet him, immediately admit him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. There I'm, waiting, I'm waiting in open court for the... Uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the Trump's attorneys mm -hmm. to say if you had sex with him, the two women, how big is his penis? <laughs> oh, it happens. I'm, I mean, in seriousness, you know, that ought to be. Well, that question's already been asked of Stormy Daniels. And she yeah. said basically, yeah, it's well, she said about the size of a small mushroom, right? Yeah. 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 So, you know. In other news. In other news, yeah. So anyway, um, it's. It, um, um, I was thinking about you know today. I was thinking about the. I was just joining to see you. I okay. was here to join to see you. you I'm 21 now. I'm 21. Yeah, well, you're also out of here, pal. <laughs> How did you get back on? I don't know. I clicked. Use the same name he used a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. I I clicked it by accident. Wow. Uh, remove. 
I see if I go remove and then I go here. I'm go 21. Over. Good. Yeah. I don't give a shit. You can be 14 yeah, as long as you're polite. Go, thank you. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I guess he isn't used to, he really likes to get removed a lot. Well, I just won't even pay attention. Was the, that good Mogan David wine left over from password a pass a Passover, Jeff? No. It was unfortunately that wine is always the worst. Oh, absolutely. What the wine on Passover? Oh yes. absolutely. Oh yeah, it's it's Mogan David. It's my oh, Manashevitz. Yeah. Oh God. You know, what you really do, I think if you want to really have fun on Passover, is you just uh, put them in the freezer, make popsicles out of them and suck on that, you know. Get a pretty cold freezer. Wouldn't it be funny freezer. if they had Ma Mogan David or Manischewitz uh, style uh, popsicles? That would be nice. That would be That's good. Good idea. That would be terrific. License it. Start your own business now. Yeah. Now that you're uh, mm -hmm. yeah. got extra money, maybe you should start your own yeah, business. Start some business. <laughs> yeah, sure. I like. I want to go into business now. I just I just want to have an you know I just like to have uh, some time not having to be tired all the time and so on mm -hmm. you know and I'm just tired of being tired so I just want I just want to get on that vacation and go see the world and do a few things you know and then after that I'll pack it in and mm -hmm. sit around and do nothing you know but mm -hmm. anyway make sure you get good Wi-Fi so we can do the show. What do you mean, good Wi-Fi? Where? On the ship. Oh, they don't have wi good Wi-Fi on any ship. No. Uh, I've talked to people about Wi-Fi on ships, and I, I was talking to uh, Lori about it, and she tried, but they, you know, you can't. If you upgrade to their better plan for Wi-Fi on a ship, it still sucks. No. <laughs> well, the last time I was on a cruise ship was almost twenty years ago. I don't think Wi-Fi was invented by then. I don't know. know. All the ships have Wi-Fi now, but you know it's not uh, it's not supposedly very good. At least mm. that's what I hear. You know. It was like ten dollars a minute the last cruise I went. Holy moly! <laughs> wow. Ten dollars a minute? No, they're not that now. You pay something like ten dollars a day or something, and then they oh, don't get they don't they don't give you a lot of ten dollars a day. <laughs> they don't give you a lot of bandwidth. You know. Mm. So anyway. Hey, Pam. Was it any good? What? I see some other Wi-Fi. What what, what? what? What was any good? The Wi-Fi? What did What did she say, Jeff? That uh, it was good. No. Yeah, that's yeah, a, but you know what we do here takes a little bit more bandwidth than say sending an email or sending a text or something like that. You know. Well, what she's not saying is they hadn't left the port yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alan. Oh, Alan, Alan, Alan. So anyway, so uh, I um, you know, I you know, I've been uh, we had this whole thing going on up at Columbia University. And last night they sent the cops in to close it down. Yeah. About time. You know, now, uh, I don't think it's about time. I think that, I think Columbia University handled this very badly from mm -hmm. the, from the get-go. You know, oh, yeah. the best way to, to diffuse something like this is to sit down and talk with them. But the trouble is that some of these universities are so full of themselves that they don't want to do that. You know? I, I wonder how many of the students that started this were actually students. Uh, that's, that's the problem. Thing, yeah. There's a well, lot got, of outside gotten, agitators. We've gotten two emails from U of O, and they've said that there's a lot of outside influence. They're mm -hmm. coming in and stirring up the crap, and then people are coming in and um, sitting there going, oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. He's right, yeah. And they're not sure what they're talking about. Right. And that's yeah. the problem. And there's professional agitators out there. Well, that are the problem is up. the problem is they found that there were people from the outside who were not members of the, uh, you know, um, the uh, university of the, the university, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, uh, yep. and they went in and were making the trouble. 
that the yep. real tr- that's that, what I just said. Yeah, yeah. That the yeah, that the that the um, students were not making that kind of trouble. You know, I mean, they were they were protesting and they were camping in and they were doing all those things. They were doing what they felt they needed to do to protest the universities. Um, Columbia is private property, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, all, all universities yeah. are no, private property. No, all universities are public property. Ah, see, that's what I was trying to... What I do didn't you mean know. they are? I thought they were public private. Public property. No, they, have the they right are public to... property. They, they say... say that in in the in the uh, mm-hmm. both emails that we got, the universities are public property and the oh. public is, a, is allowed on and they're invited to be on, but they must follow the rules yeah. of the university. Yeah, but these are students. This is even different from people who just want to visit. Well, what and, I'm saying is that there's students there now, but the per- people that are starting up this stuff are agitators, I professional th- yeah. agitators. And yeah. then the students join in saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. And then it becomes a mix of both. Well, what is and it? And the ones that are making yeah. most of the yeah. noise are the shit disturbers. Yeah. Well, I... I... And that, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's my point, because... That, that's exactly what's happening, and this is what's happened before, and this is what Trump is going to feed on. He's going to yeah. jump in there and say, "Look at all this," you know, and that's what he's doing today in Wisconsin. And he's going to use that as his little ploy. That look at the the way the country is all screwed up now because, and it, and it could be I don't know if it's his people or it just, you know, quote unquote Antifa. Yeah, it's going to be Antifa. Yeah. Well, and these people are going to be in there, and it's just just caused total chaos. There were, and it could, you yeah. know, there could be a ten percent to ninety percent, or eighty percent, twenty percent of shit disturbers and people that actually care about what the cause is. That, that's what I'm saying. And the ones that make the most noise are the ones that get all this coverage and everything. Well, I I don't know that I don't know that that's necessarily true. That, that the, the, well, that's what they're saying, and you know, yeah. Well, I don't put it past them. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I it, here, here's here's what I believe. There were people who went up there who were not students at the university, Columbia, mm-hmm. Columbia University, which, by the way, in all the news reports that I saw locally, said that Columbia University was private property. I and think they, it is and they and they had to. Uh, let the police come on last night. They had to give them permission because it That's was right. private property. Well, Columbia That's might be, but yeah. they're, they're saying that the go University of Oregon point. and anything that's a, a state well, university, maybe. They, yeah, that's I don't know. State, yeah, state's that, totally that's different. different. Yeah, yeah, that might be a private university. university. That could yeah. be different. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what I'm so, saying. So, so in, yeah. in, uh, Josh might know more, more about this, but it, in if it's a private university and they want you off, they call the police and you come off. If it's a public university, I think anybody can walk across campus that wants to because it's public. Wait, a Tell that to Greg Abbott. They're bashing students over the head with batons and shit. Well, okay, what's wrong with that? Out in California, <laughs> Ga- 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 Gavin Newsom, oh, much to his credit, well, came down right. came down on the uh, on the police at UCLA, saying they acted wrong you know uh, uh, the lapd it was on the news last night went in there because the university asked for help because the university police cal state mm-hmm. university or whatever couldn't handle it and they went UT in there didn't and, even ask for help abbott just sent the national guard there really yeah what was wrong with the austin police department nothing Oh, well, they should have been the first response. Well, what I what I believe is that the police, if they're going to go in, should ask people to show them a student card, and if they can't produce it, you throw them out. You get rid of them. You arrest them, or yeah. you do whatever you're going to mm-hmm. do. But if they are a student, I think they have the right to protest. They have the right to protest, but not destroy property. No, destroying property. You can fucking sure. destroy property all you want to, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, and that's, like that's a cop do. mentality. You as a policeman, your only job in life was really to defend property, yeah. not to defend people. Am I right, Charlie? They should be defending people, but they're defending property. You'll get bashed over the head more for... for uh, breaking into some place than you will be for, for for 
beating somebody up. Property is inanimate. Human beings aren't. Yeah. You know? And to, to say <clears throat> they're destroying property, oh, that's horrible. Well, yeah. it's, it ain't good, but I'm not I don't... Saying, I'm not saying it gives the police a right to hit them, tase them, pepper spray them, or anything. But I, but I think it's wrong that they're destroying property. If they want to protest, they have the right to protest. Yeah, have fun. Quiet. Destroy the property. The university's insured. No, I think the guy that was smashing windows at UT uh, with a hammer, they ought to throw him in jail. Sure. Right. There you go. Sure. But he probably, that guy probably wasn't a student. Yeah. He was probably one of these shit disturbers. You right. know, yep. and that that that's a whole different game. You know, those people yeah. should be dealt with because what they're doing is they're coming into a situation which taking advantage of it is tentatively incendiary and creating yep. an incendiary situation. Uh, but you know, these guys are uh, uh, criminals. Criminals. Uh, I won't say they're criminals. They're you say they're professional shit disturbers, and I wonder when you say professional, you know, I got to give them credit. They're professionals. What makes you? They're professionals. They're not amateurs. <laughs> you know, you get it. and and what do they do as a as a professional shit? How do you disturber? work up to that? <laughs> huh? How do you work up to professionals? Well, like you, right? you have to you, you have to go to another college first <laughs> and study shit disturbing and then you can become a person like you he's got some well actually there are trade schools that tr <laughs> yeah. shit disturbing isn't really? that what trump Come university thought oh that was bogus <laughs> yeah what were you gonna say jeff i, I want to have a whole a different opinion but mm -hmm. i've 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 heard uh, a lot of the information and it's it kind of runs around but from what I understand, there was a whole bunch of people who were part of the university, students and and doctors or whatever they are, Back the bosses, Back you know, mm -hmm. and they were all very negative about the whole idea between Israel and all of that stuff. And a lot of the people decided that you know what, they're gonna get really bad about expressing, in addition with more people, that there's problems, and they're gonna continue to make it worse. Well, they said, you know what, we're gonna split up the group. We'll take a small group, whoever wants it, you know, and you ought to join the group and, and you expect you're going to be get arrested. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed the police are going to go get you originally. The rest of you, you can stay on the other side. You don't get in the building. You're a student. You're a university. You're a professor. You can complain all you want, but you're not doing anything. Listen, let me ask you this question. Don't these kids have the right to complain? in that what are they paying each year for tuition yeah. at this university aren't they the boss yes I think Columbia well, i'll tell you what thousand dollars a year huh you want to hear from me what yeah i told my daughter she better go to class and don't burn my money on the lawn <laughs> <and> the freaking... <laughs> that's what i told her what's yeah. happening up at her at her right uh, hey. oh they start an encampment on monday and we got a we got an email on Monday about what they were doing in the main quad, the memorial quad, and it was twenty tenths. And then we got one today, and I read about two thirds of the email. And they said it was getting bigger, and that they were going to take care of things if it got out of hand. Yeah. Well, I said okay, go for it. Yeah. And I called my daughter and said, "Have you been around there?" She said, "No, I'm going to class." I said, "Good. Don't torch my money." <laughs> <laughs> When she got off the phone, she's making the hate signs. <laughs> oh, shit. Did he oh, buy it? He bought it. Let's go. Oh, you're, Isn't you're, it final? And, now, and then I'm watching TV every 10 minutes. <laughs> Kevin just took you off the Christmas list for down. that, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> They're all getting take-home tests. Don't worry about it. Make your hate signs. Yeah, well, you know, I wonder about, about uh, uh, I, I do think that there were troublemakers who go in there. 
Those people should be identified and thrown They've out. They've been identified by some identified of those crowds. And yeah. thrown out. If you're yeah. a student, I think you have the right to protest. I have, you're paying the university a crap load of money, right? They're making their money off of you and, and some grants they get here and there. You know, and uh, you should have the right to do this. I mean, if you feel that your university is complicit in doing business with Israel and that that money that's going to Israel is going to kill people in Gaza, you have a moral right to protest that. If they are. Do oh, your research and oh, then oh, they go are, do They it. are a Columbia. But, Columbia admitted okay. that they are doing okay. business with Israel. That's a different situation, but if they yeah. go to, you know, all these other universities across the the country just copycatting, that's bullshit. Well, you yeah. you got to admit the one in uh, in Columbia was the first one. Yeah, right. right. And it was yeah, all it was. Ba it was all based on sure, um, and then went to on, Yale, and then you know, on, but on the Ivy Leagues, yeah, yeah, and uh, then in New Mexico, I'll you, and then, I'll tell you, Dartmouth. Uh, has handled this very well. The yeah, first day, much better, yeah. It, what did they do? The first day it started <laughs> happening, they sat down with the students and had a, a meeting with them and said, look, let's talk this out. Let's figure out where we can come to some common ground. And they pretty well killed that demonstration just by talking. Columbia, on the other hand, didn't do mm. anything of the kind. You know, it was so badly handled. You know, so... Universities. What are you What are you going to do when this moves from the universities to private businesses? You think it will? What do you mean to private businesses? Explain. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. No, maybe but no, Facebook, explain that one. You're. you're yeah. You're, okay. I, I can. I can if you. So Facebook. Facebook's founder. <laughs> Facebook's founder is Jewish, and he supports Israel. And so, what's going to stop people <laughs> from doing this in Facebook too? Or yeah, other businesses so. that support Israel. He's he he is Jewish, is he? Yeah, yeah. Zuckerberg. I think he is. Zuckerberg. Yeah. Yeah. Zuckerberg yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 early on. He said he gives money to Israel. Okay. He, he, he has a right to spend his money the way he wants to. Right. Yeah. And but, but what are you going to do? And I have the I have the right to decide where I'm going to put my my posts. Absolutely. You know. So the, he is he is. Facebook marketplace. Yeah, it, it he's go, you know it's in the marketplace, and I don't have to do business with him if I don't want to. I'm not saying a matter of doing business. I'm saying when these protesters move on to his property and start damaging stuff, that is private property. Well, that would be yeah, absolutely yeah. private property. But you're what you're setting up a situation that doesn't exist and hasn't existed. Okay, yeah. so don't try and, and make that an argument. Trump's little things went went to the went to went to the uh, to January six. So we all blew off Trump's little, you know, little bashes here and there, and then then it blew up into January six. So. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put these things beyond. I don't. I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, no. But, but now that you've suggested it, maybe somebody will think that's a good idea. I've already heard I'm it. Getting worried. People. I think it's going to blow out or blow over after the colleges. I don't see it happening. You know, much. these demonstrations, this kind of demonstration, I hope you're right, Tony. only happens, I mean, believe it or not, during the end of the school semester. It's the finals and now finals. They're in midterms right now. Yeah. Midterms and Let's whatever. Let's not take any guesses though, Ray. Every time they've ever had demonstrations, whether it was the yeah. war in Vietnam or I was watching uh, documentary today, yeah. a bunch of bunch of different things that they protested over the years. It's always about the same time of year. It's like it's protest season, you know. This is it now, right? Well, Josh, what do you th what you're thinking on this? You've been very quiet tonight, and I not sure what some of the protests at colleges is really accomplishing i mean in in many of these cases the the colleges are not mm. you know participants in this uh you know this war whatever you want to call it yeah. they're not really funding it i mean maybe they do some businesses business with businesses in israel i mean it's a global economy. It's a little hard not to. It's not as if Israel is North Korea. I'm sure my company sells paint in Israel if they're asked to. I know the last one I worked for. No, but that, that, that's not what they're, what they, at least at Columbia. And I can't say for the other schools because I don't know about the other schools. But Columbia is deeply invested in Israel. 
financially. Yeah, but and they that's were what they invested in Israel when all those people started going there, and now the situation has changed. Yeah, but it's at that point, the same as the Facebook, you know, at that uh, time you didn't have Israel doing well, what they're doing in Gaza, for instance. Then they can leave Colombia. Well, they can leave Colombia, or they can mm -hmm. they can stand to make their uh, their school live up to what they think they should live up to. You know, and they can do that in ways that don't involve destroying, you know, the school's property. Yeah, yeah. in my opinion. But what, what? Why are we so I mean, upset by the destruction of property? That always bothers. Because it's, it's not, always it's not yours. The our, our <laughs> framers were appalled by the destruction of property, even though it took place quite a lot. They were appalled by it. I mean, they just they couldn't even fathom that one man would destroy another man's property in the name of. Yeah, but Something this, this isn't been, because this, they believed it didn't accomplish anything. This because isn't, this isn't the same as private property, though. This this is a school. Why not? This is a school. This is a building in a school. Yeah. Uh, I I agree. I don't think you should destroy property, but I think we make too big a deal out of destroying property, as though it's like one of the greatest sins you can commit. And I don't know that property has any soul to it. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't disagree that property is property, but the law is the law. If you come to my home and you smash in my windows, why is that a worse crime than if you go to a, a building on Columbia's campus and you because smash in Columbia, their windows? Because in you're, Columbia, you're, you're literally protesting mm -hmm. a political stance that the university is taking, whereas in your home, right. that's your private home. But right. what if, what their, if, what if, what if I mean, Josh was a bigot? What if Josh was a bigot? Well, I come and smash his TV set. <laughs> and that's, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, that's a that's a. But you brought the show. You no, know, that's an office that someone works in. The the yeah. the school owns it. It's their property. They maintain it. They pay for it. They take care of it. The students have agreed <clears throat> to attend there. I kind of pay for it. Look, don't look, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. Okay, I'm not saying here that uh, I agree with what they're doing. All I'm saying is we're putting too much emphasis on the fact that it's property. And and well, if they were hurting people, physically yeah, hurting right. people, that That's bothers it. me. In some but cases, I will also, they have. But I they will, have. I'd rather not smash a window than hit somebody. I mean, in some know. cases, what, what, they've hurt people. You know, I saw a janitor, I think, at Columbia getting roughed up pretty good you know, by people trying to get out of the yeah. way you know the first night when he was just there mm -hmm. trying to do his job or whatever yeah. well that's wrong you know, they'll prosecute you know, if I mean, they can they can get that but i mean, I mean look years ago the capital, I said, the capital is the people's property but those people on january 6th had no right to go in there and do what they did right you know we, I mean, I would. We did not employ nearly as much force as I think we should well, have. Well, I think, I think, I think in that case, you you hit it right on the head. It's the people's property, and what they were doing is they were bashing your property and my property and Brian's but Columbia property. Columbia is not the, the same thing property. about the university. Yeah. Yeah. Do I not? Do I not pay tuition to pay for some of those windows? Right. Yeah, but I mean, those have to be replaced, and somebody's got to come up with the money for that. That's going to raise everybody's tuition and look, fees. You, you know, years, I was just going to say that years ago, when when I was involved in demonstrations and so on, I always admonished any kind of activity which would piss off people. In other words, you don't want to piss off people. You want maybe you want to piss off Columbia University, but you right. want to get the people on your <clears throat> side. I mean, and so what, if you do, be, if you do action, if you do actions these, which alienate people from you, you know, that's not that you're not. You would be better for these right. kids to do if it is indeed really that much of a uh, of a grassroots movement would have been to have gotten together and said we're walking out of the university and none of us are paying our tuition anymore because we don't like where the money goes. I mean, well, that, that would have been a protest, and that would have been a protest I could support because that's within the market, but. Yeah. Well, we still want to go to school here, but we're going to destroy the buildings. I mean, look, that's against the law. Well, and I don't we think anybody anybody differentiating started, different properties yeah, as different equations but of crime. To begin with, let's separate the the destruction yeah. which was going into that building, Hamilton Hall, I think it's called, or something, yeah. mm -hmm. and right. and and doing what they did because that probably wasn't the average protester. Those were outsiders coming in to make trouble, right? And they've identified them as such. 
Yeah, and and said they, they were, so those people should be removed. Yeah, but last night, they literally threw everybody off the property. Well, I don't know that these folks are cooperative enough for the police officer to stand there and say, hello, sir, would you be willing to show me your identification? Exactly. And, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these people, I mean, that's not how they were treating the police that I saw. When the police have to use saws and uh, when the police go in with, with the, battering rams to open doors and clear damage mm -hmm, to get mm -hmm. to get to the people, so they probably did more damage you know, and load than the students did. Nah. Yes. What do you mean? They're nobody? the ones I mean, that piled up debris so that the cops can't get in. I mean, that's it. Well, you know, Columbia it's is a property. I mean, it wasn't debris. It was chairs and. And uh, tables right, I mean, whatever you. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's all different stuff. I mean, you could find, yeah. I just don't. All I'm saying is, is that no. I, I think that there was a better way to handle all of this, and it sure. was handled very poorly on the part of. Right. Uh, I mean, but I didn't see a lot of cooperation from people, uh, students or whatever at Clem. I mean, Dartmouth, for example, was able to have a discussion where they invited people from Israel, Israelis. Uh, an ambassador or something like that to come and give their side of the story as well. And everyone sat around and listened to both sides. But the people at Columbia aren't interested in hearing the Israeli side. I don't, if you don't think the Israelis are right, that's fine. But I'm just saying they're not interested in anything. They're just, let me you know, let, uh, uh, what they're doing. Babe. We don't want to hear the other side. We've made up our mind, and, you know, that's it. Can and I, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to... I'm going to destroy your property. <laughs> Kevin just sent me a message. That That's was, called a threat. Uh, uh, Kevin just sent me a message from Oregon where his daughter. I just sent you the, what they sent me to a few minutes, about yeah, an hour ago. It looks like they're handling it pretty well. Well, they, they had discussion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what is Columbia, Columbia, I've never been on the campus. It's probably a lot of old wood buildings, correct? What are you going to do when they start a fire inside the building? Is that you know okay? you do all these ifs? What if they start a fire? Well, they haven't you know, started. Wait, you know, wait, wait a minute. Alex, Hold on a second. They haven't started a fire yet. Okay. So when they st start the fire, let me know and we'll discuss it. Okay? Yeah. See, I was I was a cop for a long time. <laughs> I know, and, 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 and a lot of things escalate. So I'm not. I don't know if they're going to start and, a fire, and, but what are you going to say well, if they? Burn the building. You send down. a bunch of people in in riot gear. Isn't that escalating it? Yeah. No. I mean, I don't need to burn things. I mean, down. Not, it's not if no. that's the response that's required to maintain use of force, a decorum of law. I that's mean, right. but look, that's that's the law. And if I mean, you defy it, and you're warned. I mean, look. I mean, I know they should talk. These folks don't look like they're interested in talking. They're not. They, they're, I mean, they're just, they're making demands. This is, I mean. Well, you know, if you say, if you say. Like that, I said, if they wanted to organize a protest and walk yeah. out of Columbia and stop paying their tuition and say, I'm taking my parents' money, in most cases, I'm taking my money across the street to Connecticut and I'm going to go to Yale. Okay. Then Columbia would go bankrupt. Problem fucking solved. Or yeah. they would say, you know what? We're losing money here. We need to figure this shit out. But instead, they just, you know. I mean, and the people they interview on TV, I mean, it's almost laughable. They can't put two sentences together, and they're talking about apartheid and all these other... I'm like, well, I have no idea what this lady just said in some cases that I've seen. It's like... I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of... Have their I, shit together. I've seen a lot of people locally, because the local news covers it far more in depth than even sure the national do, yeah. news does. And mm -hmm. uh, I've seen some of these students, and they were very <clears throat> articulate. They were very articulate. Well, I'm sure some of them are, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that, you know, and I, I see a lot of the coverage where, you know, I mean, the one video that I saw from Columbia, I mean, probably eight out of ten people is wearing uh, clothing to conceal their face and cover up their mask, yeah. you know, mask their face and identities because they don't want people to know who they are. And, I mean, look, I wasn't there, but I'm a decent student of history, and I think most of the people who protested in 1968 and 1969, for example— Hey, they weren't hiding their face. They were proud to let people you know, know something, though. Uh, I got to tell you, know, you let me, we're not here to hide our identity. Let, let me mention something about demonstrations here for a second. Mm -hmm. Is that demonstrations have not proved to be the wrong thing to do. We demonstrated against the war in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We finally ended the war in Vietnam. 
we uh, you know when we had the protests against racial problems in this country we those came to an end as a result of all the demonstrations you know many times sometimes it's unfortunate mm. the only kind of message america is willing to accept is one that kind of threatens violence and well, then somebody pays attention that's the problem think, pay I attention if, just pay if attention if i remember the time you know the the, the oh. vietnam pro protests and I was still pretty young then, but I remember them. That most of the time, it was they were peaceful demonstrations until the police went in, and the police yeah. didn't know how to handle them, mm -hmm. and they started the shit. And right. then the protesters were basically defending themselves, and then it became chaos. Yeah, yep. is that not right? So oh, if, absolutely. If, uh, so that was before the the police knew how to crowd control things like that well apparently so you know they that were, was not necessarily a, a riot as per se until something started it the, the 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 protests in those days were peaceful protests sit-ins stuff like that yeah who's going to start a bunch of shit when you all sit down and sit around and talk about flowers and if, stop the war. Oh, I got club, I got club, I got tear gassed in Chicago. Right. I but got, I got Did I you had, go did you go there and ask for that? No. No, I went there to The protest. police were untrained in doing that and they well, said actually, you got to get out actually, of here because I, of all these other people and they started clubbing people because they wanted you out of there but there was no reason for that. You were sitting there probably maybe smoking a joint and saying stop the war. Yeah, basically. And then we were so, tear gassed out. That of wasn't the your fault. That was the untrained Police, well, force. I don't know that they're necessarily better trained today. I think. Oh, yeah. Well, that's think, another story, but yeah. you're right there. But there's also the protester of today is much more aggressive, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it, much it, more aggressive. It's just that you it, can't say no about I think that. The, at the beginning of the Columbia demonstrations. Uh, I mean, the, of today. The, I mean, the, the era of today. Yeah, the, the last ten yeah, years. Yeah, the people who were protesting. Not just today. In the very beginning of this, where I think had a sincere idea of what they wanted and were protesting it. It's just it gets a little out of hand, especially when the, the, ship uni well, the university refuses to talk to them. You know, like uh, you say at, at, at your school, your daughter's school, they're taking this thing on in the correct manner. They're going to see this thing not escalate because they're listening, Okay. They're not just saying, shut up, we're the school, you can't do this. And that's basically what Columbia was saying. And I think part of it had to do with a few days earlier, you remember what kind of started this whole thing, the head of Columbia spoke in front of a, a, a uh, yeah, yeah, congressional yeah, committee, and then she yeah. went back to Columbia, and the protest yeah. started over what she had said. Okay. There, yeah, there could have been mistakes up there. Yeah. So then yeah. she wasn't willing to talk to anybody. She wasn't willing to de-escalate the situation. Instead, she, hey, I'm the head of the school. You can't do this to us. You know. So I mean, it, it's just that you. But it brought in the demonstrators that were saying Hamas is great. Uh, I'm a Hamas pig. Oh, well. Yeah, uh, that kind of crap. Well, you know, brought those people in. Yeah, but I don't think that most people are. They born. weren't. It, Probably it, the minority, but they started the shit. And by the way, remember one thing. When somebody is against Israel and what they're doing, uh, that is not being anti-Semitic. Okay? Right. In fact, you want to be anti-Semitic? you got to hate uh, Hamas as well because they're Semitic. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... Uh, That's the problem with this thing is it's a complicated situation. I don't think a lot of people understand. Yeah. yeah. yeah but until you understand it, you should well, keep your mouth shut. It's been complicated for a long time. Here comes it has. The th here comes the theme playing behind you. Boy, it's been a good yeah. discussion. Today. Yeehaw. Wow, this is one. That I like this one. Let's do it again. Next <laughs> time, though, let's use, um, oh, I don't know, brass knuckles. I think that would be fine. <laughs> And fun. I'll wear a helmet tomorrow. I'll wear a helmet. God, I got tomorrow. some work done. I got some work done, so it was good. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> Did you get some work done? Yeah, yeah, it's good. I had to re <laughs> review a couple things. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just wait till your kid has to go to school and put up with this. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, the elementary school, the third graders were protesting today. It's terrible. They're throwing the volleyball Watch out, they around. might start. <laughs> They're doing <laughs> high school now. They walk out. Anyway. Dude, toilet paper everywhere. Thanks to Jeff for being here, and thanks to Kevin for being here, and Alan for being here, and Josh. I always am surprised tonight having you here. Yeah. It's a bonus. Uh, mm. Brian, thank you for being here tonight and getting your work done. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. And, of course, uh, Tony, thank you very much. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And then they can say goodbye. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Boy, that was a good one. That was a good one. It's nice to have a good one. Anyway, uh, 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 guess what? Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the intersection. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.